Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. This week we find ourselves preparing for and celebrating Thanksgiving that most of us will always remember. It will probably not be remembered for its festive feasting with friends and family, but for its simplicity and the satisfaction of knowing we are doing our part to curb a pandemic and keep each other safe and healthy. So my turkey breast is in the refrigerator, along with the sweet potatoes and celery and on onions, etc. for the dressing. The dining room table will be opened to its fullest. So the four who are gathering around it can feast at a distance. My son will be the only family member in attendance since my daughter and her family are recovering from COVID-19 in Tacoma. The other two guests are a friend whose significant other is confined to her retirement community and my widowed neighbor from across the street. It'll be an interesting mix of people, but hopefully the conversation will turn to memories of favorite Thanksgivings from the past. This is a good year to give thanks for the many things we are missing. It is a time to give thanks for wonderful memories of what has been and our hope in the wonderful memories that are yet to be made when once again we are living in a healthy future. Often I celebrate Thanksgiving with my brother and his family. It works out perfectly. I can sing with all of you at nine o'clock mass at the Madeline then catch a plane and fly to Spokane in time to have dinner with my brother and his family. But not this year. My brother and his wife will be dining alone with their little dog, Bindi. I miss my brother. I haven't seen him for over a year. But that doesn't keep me from giving thanks about the times we have shared together and the memory, many memories that we have. This year, I miss singing Thanks Be to God with all of you and being moved by the tenor solo and the steady notes of trumpeter John. Let's thank God for those memories and plan to do it next year. I am so grateful for the wonderful social life I once had. Long lunches at favorite restaurants with my daughter and best friends and getting dressed up to go out for an evening of play, of a play or music, and even sitting around with friends in the evening, chatting and drinking wine. These are all good memories that will happen again, only with deeper appreciation. How about taking a close look at the life you are living right now? There is much about which to be thankful. I find my senses are sharper I see the cold fog shrouding the trees on the hillside behind my house, and I give thanks for that beauty. But I also give thanks for the cozy warmth of my home. I savor the rich aromas coming from the food cooking in my crock pot or baking in my oven, and I am grateful. This year I have planted more bulbs in my outdoor containers with the hope of a colorful spring abundant with tulips and daffodils. I am treasuring the gift of time. Time that once set boundaries and restrictions. Time that set the pace and caused stress. Time that once controlled me and that now I am in control of it. My daily to-do list often is filled with things I want to do not the things I have to do. There is time to read, to write, to clean out, and to create. I give thanks for time. I am so grateful for the pod of people who are part of my life. Those of you with whom I Zoom for choir or my face sharing sisters, and those of you who physically make your presence known to me and enrich my life, like my son and my granddaughter, and my dear neighbors who live next door with whom I share my faith and wonderful Saturday night Sabbath suppers, Sunday night Sabbath suppers. 
I am thankful for this moment right now. I am thankful for the privilege of working with Maria and Michael as we create these reflections for you each week. I am thankful for the opportunity it has given me to grow closer to my God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. God's love endures forever. Give thanks this Thanksgiving for what has been, what is, and what is yet to come. Happy Thanksgiving 2020. about 11 years old when I first heard the beautiful sacred song, Thanks Be to Thee. My friend John was studying voice with my dad. He was 12 at the time, and I was his accompanist. It was John's first classical song. He sang it in German, of course, and my job was to keep the block chords nice and steady, not too slow so that he could sing the long notes, and not too rushed. In other words, just right. It seemed like such a simple thing. I mean, John had the hard part, as he actually had to sing in German. But I soon learned that I was the one responsible for keeping it all together, and my tempo could make or break him. It was a lot of pressure for an 11-year-old accompanist. Several years ago, I ran across a really wonderful choral arrangement of this anthem. Every time we sing it, and it's now a Thanksgiving tradition, I am still reminded of the importance of those ostinato-like block chords. But now I see that those steady chords are really a musical representation of the steady, unwavering hand of God in our lives. It's called word painting. 
It is that steady musical tempo, that which represents God, that allows the melody of the song to flourish. That melody, it is we, the people. From the beginning of time, just as God's mighty hand brought the Israelites to safety, he has continued to lead us as a people through famine, wars, plagues, and all things unimaginable, even COVID. And so this simple anthem that I first learned as a child represents all of that and more to me this Thanksgiving. I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that the Feast of St. Cecilia was November 22nd. Her life reads like a James Bond movie. She is known for singing in her heart to the Lord on her wedding day when forced to marry a pagan nobleman. Then, when police came for her demanding her to renounce her faith, St. Cecilia told them to basically take a hike. She would rather die. Legend has it that they then intended to suffocate her by burning her in a large oven. But instead of choking to death, she began to sing. Infuriated, her persecutors attempted to behead her, but she was not and remained alive for another three days. Wow, and we think we have it bad. As we continue to battle the trials of life, may we draw upon the fortitude and conviction of St. Cecilia, and may she always, as the patron saint of music, inspire us to find God within music. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be sure to keep a song in your heart.
Please join me in our choir prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless, O Lord, us, your people, who minister in your holy temple. Grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And that what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us.